praises. Shalom. I remember being a young boy. I would read Revelations, pray through the sun, boy. Shalom, Nobody and we're all still see. Need it. Soldier Judah. All right, today we're going to go uh, into the issue of stress. All right, today's title is The Scriptures on Stress. All right, so. Uh, we know a lot of our people are plagued by this issue, and uh, we're going to go into it. We're going to figure out what causes it and what's the solution to this issue. All right, so first I want you to give me the definition of stress. Stress, worry caused by a difficult situation. All right, so stress is worry that is caused by a difficult situation. All right, now give me Sirach chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 1. Understanding that we're Israelites and that we are repenting, understand that stressful situations are going to arise. All right, read that. Sirach 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. All right, if you come in to serve the Lord, you just repent. Read. Prepare thy soul for temptation. Uh huh. Set thy heart aright. Uh huh. And constantly endure. Uh huh. And make not haste in time of trouble. So the Most High is telling you to get ready for what's coming to you. Read. Cleave unto him. Do what? Cleave unto him. Uh huh. And depart not away. Uh huh. That thou mayst be increased. At thy last end. At the last end. So when you're going through these trials and tribulations, when you're having stressful things on your mind, he says, hold on to them and you'll be increased at the end. Read verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, uh -huh. take cheerfully. No, take stressfully. Take cheerfully. Take it cheerfully. Read. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Uh -huh. For gold is tried in the fire, mm -hmm. and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So he's telling you that he's putting you through these stressful situations for a reason. From there, give me 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and 34. Because ultimately, when you look at the issue of stress, what it is, it's a lack of faith, and it's a lack of patience in the Most High God. Because it says that stress is worry and adverse conditions. So give me that, 2nd Ezra 14 and 34. 2nd Ezra 14 and 34. Uh-huh. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. Do what? If you subdue your own understanding. You see that? You must subdue your own understanding. Because in the world, in Christianity, a lot of times we try to solve things by our own doings. And what does that create? That creates stress. Why? You try to create your own solutions. Coming into this truth and repenting as Israelites, we must reform our minds and understand that the Most High God is in control. So there's no thoughts or no, nothing you can think about that's going to change your situation. All right? It says, faith without works is dead. So you, when you're putting forth the works, don't stress on it anymore. All right? You put in job applications, don't stress on getting a job. Don't worry about the callback. Just keep putting forth the works. Don't stress on it. Read that again. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding uh -huh. and reform your hearts, uh -huh. ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. You see that? By leaning on the Most High and not your own understanding, not stressing situations, the Most High says he will keep you alive. From there, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. All right, now we're going to show you that a wise man will understand that there's highs and lows in your life. All right, and there's nothing you should truly stress over. Read that. Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. Uh -huh. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall fill no evil thing. Shall do what? Shall fill no evil thing. Read. And a wise man's a heart. A wise man's heart. Read. Discerneth both time and judgment. A wise man discerns both time and judgment. So a wise man understands that, guess what? There's going to be time when the money's low. There's going to be time when your woman is stressing you out. There's going to be times when things are not going to be perfect. But do you stress over it or do you lean on the most high? But a wise man can discern that. From there, go to um, Sirach 11 and 25. Because you got to understand that good times and bad times come from the most high. And when you understand that, it will give you comfort. All right, read that. Sirach 11 and 25. Mm -hmm. In the day of prosperity. In the day of prosperity, when everything's going good. Read. There is a, forget, a forgetfulness uh -huh. of affliction. There's a forgetfulness of affliction. So when things are going good, yeah, you're not going to stress at all. Read. And in the day of affliction. In the day of affliction, when things are going bad. Read. There is no more remembrance of prosperity. Right. Now you forgot everything that the Most High done for you. The Most High say don't do that. That's why it says you must reform your hearts and your minds. But a wise man can discern that. From there, go to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. All right? Because Christ gave us even better outlook on this. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Let me know when you're there. Right, read that. <coughs> Matthew 6, 25. Uh -huh. Therefore I say unto you, mm -hmm. take no thought for your life. Do what? Take no thought for your life. No, he said stress out every day. 
take no thought for your life. The most high says, take no thought for your life. Read. What ye shall eat, uh -huh. or what ye shall drink, uh -huh. nor yet for your body, mm -hmm. what ye shall put on. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Keep reading. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, uh -huh. neither do they reap, uh -huh. not, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. And ye not much better than they. So what he's saying right here is that the Most High takes care of the animals that don't even put in any work. So if you're out there keeping the commandments of God and you're doing exactly what he's asking you, why would you stress any situation? Why would that even occur? Keep reading. Which of you by taking thought? Which of you by taking thought? So which one of you by stressing over a situation? Read. Can add one cubit unto a stature. Can add one cubit <coughs> unto your stature. Meaning, by you just thinking on a situation, can you do anything about it? No. That's why you must reform your mind. Read that one all the way through. Which of you, by taking thought, mm -hmm. can add one cubit unto a stature? Uh huh. And why take ye thought for Raven? All right, from there, go to Sirach 31 and 1. I'm not bad. So the Most High is telling you, Christ is telling you, that you stressing on these situations is not doing anything for you. Put forth the actions, pray, fast, and after that, let it be. Don't keep harping on the same situations. Read that. Sirach 31 and 1. Sirach 31 and 1. Uh-huh. Watching for riches consumeth the flesh. What? Watching for riches consumeth the flesh. Watching for riches consumeth the flesh. Stress. Read. And the care thereof drops away sleep. Right. And the care thereof. When you're stressing on situation, it drives away sleep. Brothers and sisters are losing sleep over different situations. The Most High say don't do that. He just said, take no thought for what you are doing. From there, go to Sirach 29 and 21. Because we got to make sure we're in the right mindset in the first place. What, what are the things that you should even think about or stress if you even have a little bit of stress? Read that, Sirach 29 and 21. Sirach 29 and 21. Uh-huh. The chief thing for life. The chief thing, the most important things of life. Read. Is water. Water. And bread. Bread. And clothing. And clothing. And a house to cover shame. So, if whatever the issue is that you're harping on or that you're worried about, if it's not in one of these things, then you're really out of line. You're really out of the spirit. All right? Because these are the chief things of life. If you're worrying about um, whether or not you're going to make it home for a show or whether or not your mom is, uh, you're going to be able to make your mom's um, family dinner, that's that you out, you out of the spirit, sis. All right? From there, go to Proverbs 17 and 22. 17 and 23. So now we're going to show you what's going to happen to you if you continue to stress and harp on situations. Because it takes a toll on your body and on your mind. All right, read that. Proverbs 17, 22. Uh -huh. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. So brothers and sisters that's upbeat, they have a positive mindset. It says, it does what? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Like a medicine. It makes you feel good. Read. But a broken spirit. But a what? But a broken spirit. That stressed out, brother and sister. Read. Drives the bones. They dry the bones. Nobody wants to be around them. That brother don't want to be there. It's just a bad situation. The most I say don't be like that. From there, go to Sirach 30. Sirach 30 and 21. All right, read that. Sirach 30, 21. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Read that again. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. The Most High says, don't give your mind over to heaviness. Don't stress on situations. Read. And afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. In thy what? In thine own counsel. What do you do when you're stressing? How am I going to pay this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to get a ride here? The Most High says, don't do that. Read. The gladness of the heart uh -huh. is the life of a man. So the gladness of your heart is the life. Read. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. Read. Love thine own soul. And comfort thy heart. Uh -huh. Remove sorrow far from thee. Remove what? Remove sorrow far from thee. Remove stress far from you, brothers and sisters. Three. For sorrow hath killed many. For what? For sorrow hath killed many. You can just change that with stress. Stress has killed many. Three. And there is no profit therein. Uh huh. Envy and wrath shorten the life. All right. Envy and wrath <coughs> shorten the life. Because what happens after you stress on a situation for a while? You action start to come forth. Three. And carefulness. Bringeth age before the time. All right, from there, go to Sirach 38 and 18. Sirach 38 and 18. So we're reading the effects of being stressed out. All right, and it's leading to death. This scripture shows it. Read that. Sirach 38, 18. Uh-huh. For of heaviness cometh death. Read that again. For of heaviness cometh death. For of heaviness comes death. When you're stressed out, 
you can't eat, you can't sleep. You, you think the, the world's ending. It says comes death. Read. And the heaviness of the heart uh -huh. breaketh strength. And the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. All right, from there, let's go to Proverbs, uh, no, Sirach chapter 2, verse 13. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 13. Yep, that's what I want. Sirach 2 and 13. Mm -hmm. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted. Woe unto who? Woe unto him that is faint-hearted. Faint-hearted, all right? That's the brother or sister that doesn't truly believe in the Most High. They try to solve all their situations by their self. They are faint-hearted. Read. For he believeth not. For he what? For he believeth not. I told you, because stress, the true issue is not the actual problem. It's your lack of trust in the Most High, that he's over the situation. Read. Therefore, shall he not be defended. Shall he what? Shall he not be defended. <coughs> All right, give me Proverbs chapter 28 and 26. Proverbs 28, 26. Mm -hmm. He that trusteth in his own heart. He that what? He that trusteth in his own heart. Right. The person that stresses over things, a lot of times they're trying to solve it in their own heart, their own mind. Read. Is a fool. Is a what? Is a fool. Read. But whoso walketh wisely, uh -huh. he shall be delivered. Right. Those that trust in the most high God. Alright. From there, go to um Isaiah 55 in verse 8. Because it says, Whoso trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Because what you have to understand, like we already said, the Most High is in control. And we must understand how the Most High works. Read that. Isaiah 55 and 8. Uh -huh. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So when you're stressing on the situation, and when you're coming up with a solution, guess what? The Most High is not doing the same thing. Read that again. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Uh -huh. Neither are your ways my ways, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Read verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, mm -hmm. so are my ways higher than your ways. You see that? The Most High doesn't deal the same way we deal. He doesn't think that something that's stressful to us is not the same thing to him. So don't think that you coming up with a solution and it doesn't work. Don't think that's the Most High jacking you up. The Most High's working a different way. All right? From there, go to um, Psalms 107. Psalms 107, we're going to start at verse 4. So now, now we're going to give you solutions to the problem. All right? We showed you. What comes of stress, we show you what causes the stress. Now we're going to go into the scriptures. We're going to look at some of our forefathers, and we're going to get the solution. What did they do when stressful situations came up? Psalms 107, start at verse 4. Psalms 107, 4. Uh -huh. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. Uh -huh. They found no city to dwell in. So our forefathers coming out of Egypt, they were in a stressful situation. What did they do? Read. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. They, their soul fainted. Read. Then they cried unto the Lord. Then they did what? Then they cried unto the Lord. No, they so they seek their own counsel. Then they cried unto the Lord uh -huh. in their trouble. Mm -hmm. And he delivered them out of their distresses. He delivered them what? He delivered them out of their distresses. You see that, brothers and sisters? Call on the Most High God when you get in these situations. Don't seek uh, Pastor Jackie. Don't seek the, uh, the, late, the late hotline. Call on the Most High God. From there, jump down to verse, um, verse 12. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12, therefore he brought down their heart with labor. Uh -huh. They fell down, and there was none to help. Uh -huh. Then they cried unto the Lord. Then they did what? Then they cried unto the Lord uh -huh. in their trouble. In their trouble they called to the Most High. Read. And he saved them out of their distress. And he did what? And he saved them out of their distress. So why won't the Most High do the same thing for you? You got to trust and believe in these scriptures. All right, jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Then they cried. <coughs> Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them out of their distresses. That's what the Most High is here for, brothers and sisters. From there, go to Psalms 23 and verse 4. We're going to show you what should comfort us when we get in these situations. We just told you. We cried unto the Lord. Now, Psalms 23 and verse 4. Psalms 23 and 4. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh -huh. I will fear no evil. Uh -huh. For thou art with me. Because the Most High is with us through these evil situations. Read. Thy rod and thy staff. They shall comfort me. Read that again. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see that? These scriptures are supposed to comfort us, brothers and sisters. You don't seek your own counsel. You don't stress and harp on the situation. Get into the Bible. Get into these scriptures. From there, go to 2 Samuel 22 and 7. I'm going to give you some more examples of our forefathers. Because Romans 15 and 4 said, The things written aforetime were written before I learned. So we must, we must go into these scriptures and find these examples. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 22 and 7. All 
All right, we're going to read about David. 2 Samuel 22 and 7. Uh -huh. In my distress. In his what? In my distress. In David's distress. Read. I called upon the Lord. He did what? I called upon the Lord. Uh -huh. And cried to my God. Uh -huh. And he did hear my voice out of his temple. Uh -huh. And my cry did enter into his ears. And his cry what? Did enter into his ears. You see that? The Most High is going to hear you if you are sincere, brothers and sisters. But you must call upon him. From there, let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 14. 2nd Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Because the Most High gives us protocol on how to deal with these situations. So he says, call upon him in your distress and he will save you. Read that. 2nd Ezra 14 and 14. Uh -huh. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Let go from thee what? Mortal thoughts. What are those mortal thoughts? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to get food? How am I going to get to the job? Those are the mortal thoughts that are holding you back. Read. Cast away the burdens of man. Those are the burdens of man. The most I said, cast them away. Read. Put off now the weak nature. Uh huh. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto and thee. And do what? And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Those thoughts that are most heavy unto you. The most I said, set them aside. So he's telling you, don't stress the situation. Why? Because I feed the birds of the earth. So why would I not feed you? Read that again. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Uh huh. And haste thee to flee from these times. Ah, from there, let's go to uh, Sirach 1 and 22. Sirach 1 and 22. The Most High has given us the outline of how to deal with stress. There's many books, there's many classes, there's a lot of things on it. But we never think in all our lives to go into the Bible to solve these solutions. That's what we're doing now. Read that. Sirach 1 and 22. Mm -hmm. A furious man cannot be justified. For 23, I'm sorry. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. A patient man. A what? A patient man. Uh huh. Will bear for a time. A patient man will bear for a time. Read. And afterward, joy shall spring up unto him. And afterward, joy will spring up into him. Why? Because he didn't stress on the situation. He called on the Most High. He did whatever he was supposed to be doing, and he waited. All right. That's when you stress situations. You're trying to do it on your own timeline. Everything's not on your own scale. From there, give me uh, Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and 71. Because there's a purpose. There's a purpose for these stressful situations. And we're going to see what that purpose is. Psalms 119 and 71. Psalms 119 and 71. Uh huh. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. So it's good for us to be in these stressful situations. Read. That I might learn thy statutes. That I might what? That I might learn thy statutes. Because we just read in Sirach 11 that, guess what? When you're in prosperity, you forget about the bad times. And when the bad times come, you forget about the good times. So you must go through these bad times to learn to call on the Most High, whether it's good or bad. From there, give me Romans um, 8 and 28. Romans 8 and 28. Because that's how our mind works. We only, we only remember the good and we forget about the bad. And then when we're in the bad, we forget about the good. Read that. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to that them. what? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So you losing your job. You losing your wife. The Most High says all things. All things. Read. To them who are called according to his purpose. Uh -huh. So all things work together. All these situations are meshing together for something that the Most High is using you for. From there, give me uh, Colossians 3 and 2. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. <clears throat> Alright, read that. Colossians 3 and 2. Uh -huh. Set your affliction, set your affection on things above. Set your affection on what? On things above. Read. Not on things on the earth. Not on what? Not on things on the earth. You see that? The Most High has given us more instructions of where we should direct our thoughts. He's saying, think about the kingdom. Don't worry about these little petty things on earth. Set your heart on the kingdom. Matter of fact, let's get that. Go to Matthew 6 and verse 33. And let's see what happens when we set our minds set on getting the most high work done. Let's see what happens then. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Uh-huh. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. But do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the same thing Paul just said. Set your affection on the things of, of the earth to come. Read. And his righteousness. Uh-huh. And all these things shall be added unto you. You see that? It's an order. The Most High deals in order. He said, you start doing my work, he'll take care of your works. From there, go to uh, Proverbs 3 and 5. Because this, this right here is the ultimate scripture for stress, brothers and sisters. 
Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Proverbs 3 and 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Do what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. When you're trusting in the Lord, will you be stressing on situations? No. Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. That's what stress does. Read. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Uh-huh. And he shall direct thy paths. Uh-huh. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes, brothers and sisters. Read. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. From there, go to 1 Peter 5 and 7. All right? 1 Peter 5 and 7. So now we, the Most High has given us wonderful instructions on how to deal with this issue. All right? And at the end of the day, this is what he's telling you to do. This is what Paul, this is what Christ, this is what they want us to do. Read that. 1 Peter 5 and 7. Uh-huh. Casting all your care upon him. Casting what? All your care upon him. All your stresses, all your burdens. The Most High says, do what? Read it again. Casting what? Casting all your care upon him. Why? For he cares for you. You see that? The Most High has the solution for you. So give it to Christ. Give it to the Most High. Let him deal with it. Send your prayers up and do the actions that you need to do. All right? So we pray that uh, you guys are edified with that. And with that, we say shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.